All right, now let me explain you on metabolism of VLDL. So as you all know, under fed conditions, especially when someone takes carbohydrate rich diet. So glucose, glucose is converted to acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA can be diverted into fatty acid synthesis in the cytoplasm. Okay. So the fatty acids can be synthesized. Cholesterol can be synthesized under well-fed conditions, especially influenced by insulin. So whenever there is increase in the synthesis of cholesterol, which is converted to cholesterol ester in the liver by ACAT enzyme that is acyl CoA acyl transferase enzyme and then you make triacylglycerol under fed condition and then you have vitamin E coming from that that vitamin E here because vitamin E need to be transported out by VLDL whereas other vitamins that is fat soluble vitamin A, D and K they are separate transporters so vitamin E here and some amount of phospholipid all this will be loaded down to FO lipoprotein B100. Okay, so the lipids from smooth endoplasmic reticulum and FO B100 in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it will be trans fat is transported into the rough endoplasmic reticulum by MTP microsomal transfer protein. Okay, so that's how you make VLDL here and this VLDL is secreted into the circulation. Now your VLDL is in the circulation. Right, it has VLDL here. This is VLDL, which is called as nascent VLDL, newly synthesized VLDL molecule. So now it has got triacylglycerol, and that's the major composition. Then it has cholesterol ester, phospholipid, and vitamin E, and it has B100 on the surface. Now this VLDL it will acquire means it will take FOC2 and FOE from HDL, just like your chylomicron. As chylomicron we have seen. It is taking FOE and FOC2 from HDL in the same way FOC2 and FOE it will be given by HDL to VLDL. Now this VLDL is considered as a matured VLDL now. Maturation is going on in the circulation. So the matured VLDL as it is passing through the LPL. See this is again same process. LPL in, attached to the endothelium which was acting on chylomicron before now it is going to act on VLDL. So LPL is going to degrade triacylglycerol present in the VLDL and it is going to release free fatty acids taken up by the peripheral tissue and it is going to release glycerol. Okay. Now with the action of LPL, so constantly triacylglycerol is broken down into free fatty acids and glycerol. And also note that VLDL synthesis not only goes on in well-fed condition, it can also go on under fasting condition. Why? Because under fasting condition, there will be lipolysis going on in the adipose tissue. If there is a too much of lipolysis, so the fatty acids which are flooding into the liver, those fatty acids can be esterified to make triacylglycerol and you can synthesize VLDL. And VLDL comes into the circulation. Only thing is under fasting condition, insulin level is less. Because of this, LPL action can be reduced or decreased. Because of this, metabolism of VLDL can be affected. Otherwise, VLDL can be synthesized under fed condition and also under fasting condition. Anyway, so whether it is in fed condition or in fasting condition, depending on the levels of insulin, LPL is active. So it is going to degrade triacylglycerol into fatty acid and glycerol. So meanwhile, once this happens at some point in time, there will be release of FOC2. FOC2 will go back to HDL. At that time, we call that molecule as IDL. So we have, we got IDL now. IDL has got, still it has got some amount of triacylglycerol. It has got cholesterol ester. It has got phospholipid and it has got vitamin E. Now it has got B100 and it has got FOE because we have released FOC2 and that will go back to the HDL. Okay, once it, it doesn't have FOC2, so no longer it is going to be catalyzed by a lipoprotein lipase. Now what happens to the IDL? IDL has got three fates. One fate of IDL is it can be taken up by the liver and that is done by FOE receptor, FOE receptor, which are called as remnant receptors. Very similar to what we have seen here for chylomicron remnant, same remnant receptors can uptake IDL and all the contents will go to the liver. That's one fate of it. Another fate of IDL is it can pass through the membrane of hepatocyte that is the sinusoids of the hepatocyte 
over the side My membrane of hepatocyte we have an enzyme called hepatic lipase i'll write that as hl hl for hepatic lipase what this hepatic lipase does it is going to degrade this triacylglycerol triacylglycerol is degraded into free fatty acids and glycerol molecule so with the action of hepatic lipase so you are degrading triacylglycerol and the molecule is coming out of it and the molecule that comes out of hepatic lipase will now has very less amount of triacylglycerol and it has more cholesterol ester phospholipid some amount of phospholipid and it has got vitamin E and less amount of triacylglycerol meanwhile as it is released from hepatic lipase epoc2 will go back to hdl sorry not epoc2 epoe will go back to hdl so now your molecule has got only epoB100 on the surface and this molecule is called as LDL that is low density lipoprotein that's the second fate of IDL so first fate what we have seen it is completely taken up by the liver by EPOE receptor second fate is hepatic lipase acting on it converted to LDL third fate of IDL is IDL will undergo a reaction catalyzed by CETP CETP the CETP enzyme is cholesterol ester transfer protein what this cholesterol ester transfer protein does is it is going to transfer cholesterol ester from HDL 3 into VLDL, IDL and LDL let me write that part for you so HDL 3 it will be something like this it has got it is rich in cholesterol ester in the center and it will be having some amount of phospholipid and on the surface it will have EPOA1 EPOA1 then it has got three enzymes on the surface and that is CETP this is what I am going to explain you now CETP then it has got LCAT and it has got peroxinase enzyme and of course it has got all the epolipoproteins except EPOB100 and EPOB48 that's the composition of HDL HDL has got all the other epolipoproteins except EPOB48 and EPOB100 and it additionally it has got CETP, LCAT, peroxinase so CETP that is there on the HDL what it does is going to interact with VLDL it's going to interact with IDL it's going to interact with LDL all the three enzymes sorry all the three lipoproteins interact with the HDL molecule and this is an HDL3 here HDL3 HDL3 interacts with VLDL IDL and LDL via CETP what the CETP enzyme does CETP enzyme it is going to take triacylglycerol from VLDL is going to take triacylglycerol from LDL is going to take triacylglycerol from IDL all three of them in return what it does is going to give cholesterol ester to them to the VLDL cholesterol ester is given to the LDL cholesterol ester is given to IDL so all three molecules will receive cholesterol ester from HDL3 in return they are going to give triacylglycerol that is the function of cholesterol ester transport protein why this is going on the importance of this is cholesterol ester that is there in the HDL3 how that comes into the HDL3 I am going to explain that in HDL metabolism so HDL3 is rich in cholesterol ester that cholesterol ester is exchanged with VLDL, IDL, LDL for triacylglycerol ultimately what happens what we have seen VLDL is converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL so LDL is getting rich and rich in cholesterol ester okay it means cholesterol ester that was there in the HDL3 ultimately it ends up in LDL molecule why because VLDL converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL this LDL, once this LDL is synthesized, matured, this LDL is 40% is taken up by the extrahepatic tissues by LDL receptor. This is an LDL receptor which is going to recognize FOB100. 40% of the circulating LDL will be taken up by LDL receptor. 60% of it will be taken up by liver. Again by LDL receptor. LDL receptor 60% will be taken up by the liver, 40% is taken up by the extrahepatic tissues. That is how LDL will end up 
into extra hepatic tissues that are peripheral tissue. So what is there in the LDL? You have cholesterol ester, vitamin E, some amount of phospholipid and very little amount of triacylglycerol and that's how all your cholesterol ester and cholesterol along with the vitamin E, it ends up into extra hepatic tissues. Extra hepatic tissue, 40% of that and rest 60% will go to the liver. From the liver, that will come back again in the form of LDL. So it means redistribution is going on here. So any tissue which doesn't need cholesterol, they are going to pump it out, which I'm going to explain you in HDL metabolism. So tissues which needs cholesterol, they express high levels of LDL receptor. That's the concept that you need to remember. Any tissue which needs cholesterol, there will be increased expression of LDL receptor on the membrane. Any tissue which has got plenty of cholesterol, there will be decreased expression of LDL receptor on the membrane. It means tissues which have got plenty of cholesterol, they are not taking LDL inside. Tissues which needs cholesterol, they are going to take LDL inside. In this sense, basically HDL cholesterol which is taking cholesterol from the peripheral tissue, giving it to VLDL, IDL, LDL, ultimately it ends up in LDL. That will be taken up by 60% of it is taken up by the liver and again coming back into the circulation by VLDL converted to LDL. 40% of that is taken up by the any tissues which needs LDL, means which needs cholesterol. In this sense, basically you are doing redistribution. So CETP function is all about redistributing cholesterol from the tissues which has got plenty to the tissue which has got less. Okay, that's how the redistribution is going on for cholesterol molecule.